Hey everybody, this is Everyday Commentary and this is a Sweet Stuff Saturday. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Flash MT and why it is an interesting uh, entry into the multi-tool market. But before I get there, let's go take a look at the project I've been working on. And uh, we are coming down the home stretch. Everything is attached. All of the pieces are in place. I'm building the rail system for the drawer and then it will be done. All I have to do is finish it. Probably do a little routing on the top edge to make it look a little nicer. But let's get back to the gear. So this is a Flash MT. Flash was a uh, small pocket knife that SOG made for a long time. It was uh, very light and it was an assisted open. And that's probably why this is called the SOG Flash MT. Flash being sort of like their brand for something that's light and uh, assisted. But this is a really interesting multi-tool. And this is the first multi-tool, the new first new multi-tool I bought in a long time. Because for a long time, the multi-tool market was basically closed off. If you wanted to like one and done, you got the wave. If you wanted the toolbox replacement, you got the charge. If you wanted an EDC multi-tool, you got the skeletal. And there was really nothing that anybody was making. Maybe the, the super tool by Victorinox that was better than that stuff. But this is something that I think is a substantial upgrade over the Skeletool. And uh, let's let's talk a little bit about why. So one of the big drawbacks with the Skeletool was it had um, really bad pliers. Uh, so the pliers basically end like, that is the needle nose pliers on the uh, SOG, or on the, uh, the Skeletool. These come to a really, really fine point. As you can see, they're nice and tight. There's no wiggle. Um, just a really well well designed set of pliers. This is the first SOG, so I've never had the compound uh, power, or the whatever they call it, I forget. The uh, compound leverage system. I've always thought it was like really unnecessary and and just added extra weight. This is a pretty light multi-tool, so it wasn't a big deal. Uh, the other thing that this has that I, I've been waiting to see implemented in a well-made multi-tool was it has a center line driver for uh, the screwdriver so the leathermans are always off to the side because they're on one side or the other uh gerber actually invented a little arm that swung out and then had like a, a crooked neck like a gooseneck to it and that would allow you to use it even though it was on one side it would allow you to use it like a regular screwdriver this takes a different approach and i actually think this approach is more interesting uh, so if you lift this little little uh, compartment here, you bend it back and you get access to the bit driver. Now the bit driver is only a four millimeter bit driver, but if you're doing something really heavy duty, you probably shouldn't be using a multi-tool. And here's how it works. You can see here that there are little magnets inside the bottom side of the pliers. And what you do is you basically take the bit, put it in and look, it'll hold it. And then as you close it, now the tool is ready to drive like center drive stuff and uh these are these are all i have some bits but these are all square heads so these aren't gonna these are gonna illustrate the point let's see if i've got any trying to find some here we go oh no i've converted all to square head bits but um, that means I probably really need to get a square head bit driver. Oh wait, here we go. We got some right here. So as you can see, it goes in nice. You're able to turn it and you're not doing that thing where you're like going off center. It's a really nice little innovation and it's a cool design. It's a great little, uh, space saving design because you basically, uh, you know, use the back end of the pliers, which is typically nothing. So um, that's that. And then one last piece I want to take a look at, I wanted to show you, is, um, yeah. so you got to tuck it in and then push it down. Now it locks into place. So you have the, the wire cutters, the pliers, the driver, a knife, uh, not super thrilled about the assist, but whatever, it's fine. It's a multi-tool knife. It's not like it's going to be your only, your best knife ever. Uh, I, I will note that there's a lot of blade play here. Not a lot, but 
more than I'd like to see. You can lock out the blade if you want so that it doesn't accidentally fire, though I never carry it locked out and it's never accidentally fired. Uh, and then you have the uh, bottle opener uh, and pry tool. So this whole thing is really tiny. Let me show you next to some of the size comparisons that I typically use. So in most of my video or overviews, I use an American dollar and a double A battery. So first of all, there it is next to a double A battery. It, excluding the clip, is about as thick, maybe a little thicker than a double A battery, which is pretty good. As you can see, it's really tiny. Look at it compared to US dollar. And this is one heck of a small multi-tool. So I've, I've carried it now for two days in a row as my sole uh, everyday carry tool other than a flashlight and it has not bothered me at all. It weighs right in around 4.6, 4.7, uh, 4.6, 4.7 ounces and it is just, uh, you know, a nice little device. So um, look for an overview and a write-up coming soon, but this is going to be the first multi-tool in a long time that I've reviewed and it's it's probably time to hop back in the multi-tool waters because this is an interesting addition. So, Sweet Stuff Saturday. Uh, I'm trying to post every week, so come on back and then look at the website. I usually drop the new articles on Saturday morning.